A significant enhancement this year is a new function that allows users to examine current observations for all official weather stations. This includes all land-based stations, NOAA-operated coastal stations, buoys, oil rigs, and ship reports, the total number being over 5,000 stations providing hourly reports. The data includes wind speeds, wind direction, wave heights, pressure, ocean temperatures, air temperature, and dew point. This is all presented in a user-friendly format, including the depiction of current tropical cyclones and the ability to plot graphically most of these parameters. In addition, the system will display all local observed storm reports, which indicate what is happening on the ground. Let's take a quick look at some of these capabilities. When the system opens up, you present it with a map of either the US or the tropical Caribbean region and it's displaying one of the parameters in this case the wind speed at the stations reporting now we have a filter on right now where we're only showing wind speeds of 20 miles per hour or greater so for example if I set that down to zero you'll see all of the stations and there are quite a few of them we're going to be spending some time in this video looking at a nor'easter off of the northeast coast that's presenting some very strong winds along the New England coast. So let's set this to 20 miles per hour or greater and we'll see that there's a lot of winds of 20 miles per hour or greater in that location as well as the center part of the US. So let's zoom into the Northeast. Here's New Jersey, New York, Massachusetts, New England through here and there's the Canadian provinces up here. And so you can see there's very strong winds through here. Let's take a look at each parameter for this location. Now, before we do that I will mention down here it shows the different type of stations. METAR being the basic land stations, meteorological reports, uh, fixed coastal stations, buoys, ships, oil rigs, and including reconnaissance which is something interesting. Any recon flights that are going on into a storm we will display that data on this interface also. Let's take a look at some of the parameters. We're showing winds right now. But let's take a look at pressure. And you can see there's different pressures. And you can zoom into these maps, and we will in a minute. Uh, 973 millibars being the lowest. So there's a low pressure system right in here. Temperatures. And this is actually a snowstorm. Obviously, when we're looking at tropical systems, uh, we won't be looking at temperatures below freezing. Dew points, which is a very useful tool when we're analyzing hurricanes and tropical systems. Uh, lower dew points tend to weaken a storm. Higher dew points uh, sustain it better. Sea surface temperatures, and we'll take another look at that in the tropics before we end this video. Uh, and wave heights. And you can see the different locations in some of the building seas, 25 foot seas at this location, it's a buoy. And notice the pop-ups as we move around. Uh, all of this data you have the pop-up and you have the ability to right click and take some actions. And we're going to do those in a minute. The last thing I want to show you, and we'll do this when we zoom in, is the local storm reports. There are a lot of local storm reports in the area around Massachusetts uh, and the Cape Cod area. So let's do some of these graphs. Uh, one thing I did want you to notice is as you pass over a station, this area on the right will then indicate a history of what's occurred at that location over the last 24 reports, approximately 24 hours. So as you move around, except for ship reports, uh, you'll see a history for that station. So this is the station, the buoy, that had the high seas. So what we can do is say, let's plot uh, all of the parameters for this buoy. And you'll see the first one here we see is wave heights and it's increased from three feet yesterday afternoon to 25 feet now. Exit that. The sea level pressure has dropped from 1,023 down to 973, certainly as the storm approaches. And the wind speed profile has indicated winds that were as low as two miles per hour uh, yesterday at this time are now in the range of 40 to 50 miles per hour with gusts close to 70 miles per hour see the quick change. So that's the capabilities you have with any of these stations. Understand the density of stations down 
in the Caribbean and down in the uh, off near Florida, the Gulf of Mexico especially, is much more dense than what we're looking at here. So let's zoom in and take a closer look at what's going on around Cape Cod. We've zoomed in and here's uh, the stations around Cape Cod and here's Nantucket which is always a great place during a nor'easter. Uh, their report at this time was winds 48 gusting to 82 miles per hour. So let's plot all of the parameters there. And they won't have sea heights, but there's their temperature below freezing. We won't focus on that. Their sea level pressure dropping. But the most impressive one is their wind speeds. Now you notice some of these aren't labeled when there's a certain density. Um, they don't label each of the lines. But you can see the average wind, sustained winds here at 50 miles per hour with gust here to 81 miles per hour. So the, uh, the information is there. You just have to look at it on the graph a little bit. This also shows wind direction. Wind shifting from the northeast to the northwest, it looks like. So that's what you could do when you zoom in and look a little bit closer. Last thing we'll look at here is the local storm reports. I just click that option. And you'll see that there's different reports of winds as we pass our... Uh, mouse over it and it's either wind reports or wind damage. Here we have an amount of damage down here out on the Cape. Trees down on houses, tree on house, uh, wires down, West Barnstable power outage. You get the idea. And so this is very useful information. It comes in rather quickly as a storm is moving in. You'll have storm surge reports, all sorts of types of uh, storm events will be uh, reported and presented to you. So let's go back to sea surface temperature. I'm going to go back to view the country, we'll label this, and actually let's uh, just show you can see the density of stations. I'm going to focus in on the Gulf here. Look at all these reports. So each of these locations typically have a wind speed and a wind direction uh, as well as other parameters. I'll just show all of the winds here. So it's a very dense network in the Gulf and uh, off the East Coast there's quite a few buoys also. So we'll end this graphical tour. We can't go into all of the functions with the sea surface temperatures right now. And This is March 26 and some of these reports seem a little high but it's possible. We have above 80 degrees throughout Southeast Gulf all through the Caribbean and uh, part of the Atlantic here. So which this is fairly normal I believe for this time of year. Another graphical feature of the system is the ability to show formation alert areas. So if the Hurricane Center identifies some areas that are likely to develop, you can simply select this option here and it will show those on the screen. Highlight it in different colors depending on the percentage chance of a system developing in those areas. This allows you to focus just on those areas if you choose. The last topic will be about the reporting capabilities of this new feature. Within the observation program, you can come up and select observation report, select the location group, and it'll create a report that shows each location and the conditions occurring at those locations, as well as highlighting some areas where the winds may be greater than a certain criteria, etc. This happens to be the day of the nor'easter, so we see some strong winds, for example, at Nantucket, uh, some other areas up in the northeast. This type of report can be saved as a PDF. You can send it in an email, print it out, however you'd like to share it. Within the Hertrack system, you can also generate a tab-based type report showing similar information. In this case, we're showing all the information for a location group and we sort it so that the highest winds show up first. This format of the report can also be shared via email or printing or however you'd like. So as you can see, this is a function that provides a lot of information. As a matter of fact, a report that just came in from a location here in the Gulf of Maine has winds of 65 gusting to 101 miles per hour. And there's the graph for it. Anyhow, some of the likely uses of this function include oh, comparison of forecasts versus actual developing conditions, uh, easy quick displays of smaller scale events away from the storm circulation. Sometimes you have feeder bands that are occurring outside the storm circulation and it doesn't really get depicted by the wind radii. 
a system like this would be able to depict that for you. Uh, real time, multiple source, on site reports that are indicating storm effects on the ground. Those are the local storm reports. The ability to view both local or worldwide weather observations, even without a tropical cyclone. So you could use this system anytime throughout the year, even if it's December and you want to look at the conditions that may be affecting your area from a winter storm. We think this new function will be a valuable new tool in assisting users of the HerTrack system in analyzing both current and expected conditions for the area or locations that they monitor. Thanks for listening.